And uh, for you, and all you have to do is put your, fill out this form. Uh, they're at the resource table. Now, as an incentive for you to do so, I'm going to ask uh, Lady Debbie, when she comes uh, back here, she has these forms, uh, if you'd like to fill one out. But if you buy something and you fill this out, you will get another free $5 DVD. Okay, as an extra bonus for having just filled this out and buying something. Okay. And I mentioned at Creation Magazine, uh, fill out the form, tear it off, bring it to the Debbie, and she will get your magazine and DVD. All right, that's the promo. All right, so dinosaurs. Anybody heard of dinosaurs? Everybody heard of dinosaurs, right? Yeah, they're, 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 they're dead. Okay. <laughs> Right. So it is, everybody's heard about dinosaurs having had four sons, or having four sons. They uh, are always into dinosaurs. They still have a basket full of dinosaur toys, uh, which they loved for quite a while. When I grew up, of course, my introduction of dinosaurs was in the Friends of Flintstones, with Barney Rubble and Fred Flintstone and Bam Bam and Betty and Barney. Oh, yeah, they were fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You remember that? Of course, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh that was a real dinosaur era. All right. It proves humans and dinosaurs live together. I could just bite on that. All right. What do we know about dinosaurs? Well, we don't know a lot. Despite all the books and everything, we don't really know a lot about dinosaurs because there isn't really uh, that much information. Okay, we can't talk to dinosaurs. All, almost all of them are dead, right? So all we can get is from what we can gather from their fossils. You know, there are some Christians actually said, I remember was one guy said to me once at a, at a breakfast for Christian, he says, the devil put the dinosaurs in the, in the rocks to confuse Christian. I said to him, don't say this to anybody ever. This is the dumbest thing possible, right? The part of the reason he didn't know what to do with dinosaurs, because there are mentioned dinosaurs, whenever you hear dinosaurs come with an age, 260 million years or 65 million years ago. So they're always tied to the millions of years. So obviously he's not going to fit with the Bible for millions of years, but can dinosaurs fit with the Bible? Can somebody, where did they, where did they go? All right, that'll be a question. Well, so we know dinosaurs are fossils. We covered lots and lots of fossils. And where do we find fossils? Well, we find dinosaur fossils all around the world. All the way from on every continent and all the way in the Arctic and even in Antarctica. Finding dinosaur fossils. What are they doing down there? How can they live down there? Well, that's a good question. Things have changed, obviously. We also find uh, fossils in Alberta. That's right. I understand you have a fossil museum about f 40 minutes from here or so like that. I didn't know until now, but... Uh, so in uh, Drumheller and the Royal Tyrell Museum of Evolution, they, ostensibly that's what it is. And so you have all kinds of fossils. All kinds of, around the world, people are fascinated by fossils of dinosaurs and imagine what they may have been like. Okay. So the question that came a number of years ago, when I first started learning about this uh, from the creation point of view, the people thought that dinosaurs were reptiles. And reptiles can, depending on certain conditions, continue to grow as long as they live, up to a certain point, okay? They're not gonna grow bigger. And so uh, that's why, for example, in the Nile crocodiles get to be monster size, simply because they are able, under the environment, to continue to grow. Florida cro alligators don't, because if, every winter, of course, it gets very cold and they can't really con uh, continue on. But are dinosaurs reptiles? They used to believe that. No longer do they believe that. They now believe that dinosaurs are distinct type of land mammal. So you have dinosaurs and then you have flying reptiles. Are those flying reptiles, the pterodactyls, are they dinosaurs? No. They're flying reptiles. And what about those that live on the ocean? Okay, are those um, are those uh, dinosaurs? No. These are marine reptiles. Marine meaning ocean-dwelling reptiles. And then, of course, you have the other reptiles, just like the ordinary alligators and crocodiles and iguanas and things like that. Okay, so they're unique creatures. There are actually two orders, scientific classification of dinosaurs. One is called the Saurischia, which is lizard hip, which means that their, liz their legs are kind of, they go out and down, kind of like an alligator or crocodile. Okay, and there's also, sorry, back up here, ornithischia, ornate from birds, so birds' hips. 
And as I mentioned previously, where did they believe birds came from? From dinosaurs, right? So guess which order they believed the dinosaurs, uh, the birds evolved from? Was it the bird hip one or the lizard hip one? Actually, they believe it's from the lizard hip one. Okay, anyway, it's very confusing. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> So there are five dinosaur suborders. There's the Thoropoda, which is like the T-Rex dinosaurs. And you have the Sauromatomorpha, which are the long neck, the sauropods, like uh, Apatosaurus. You also have the Ornithopoda, which are basically three-toed. Uh, here we see a uh, Hadrosaur. We also see the marginal cephalia, which are the crested dinosaurs, such as Triceratops. And we also see the Thyreophora, which are the armored dinosaurs, such as this Ankylosaur. All right, so there's five orders, uh, sub, five suborders of dinosaurs. And when we dig them up, we can pretty much tell where they belong. Is this a dinosaur? No, it's a flying reptile. Okay, but to give you some idea, it's a Quetzalcoatlus. You can say that quickly, Quetzalcoatlus. It's a flying reptile. That gives you some idea of how big birds got to be at some point in time in the past. This is a monster. How does this thing fly? Right? In Algonquin Park in Ontario, which is north of Toronto, they have a beaver skull, which is about this big. Okay, a regular beaver skull, but this big. They say the beavers would have grown about this high, tall. Beavers, can you imagine? Right? And dragonflies, which would have had wingspans like my arm. Dragonflies? Dragonflies? The dragonflies? Okay, obviously, we don't have them like that today, thank goodness. Okay? And can you imagine mosquitoes? Oh, no. Why did God let mosquitoes on the ark? One thing. Anyhow. So, paleontologists are those scientists who study dinosaurs. And um, here you see a uh, paleontologist unearthing a dinosaur tail. It is all connected together, but when they pull it out, they have to be very careful that it doesn't all fall apart because it's all bone, it's all, sorry, stone and rock. So to try to extricate the fossil, the bone, the, the, the bone that is turned to rock from the regular rock. And of course, that's a little bit of painstaking. In fact, it is painstaking work. They have to do it not with shovels, but little pick handles and things like that. It can take them a long time. And what they do is they wrap it all in plaster of Paris to keep it all together, and then they bring it to the museums, and then they unpack it. So whenever you have a dinosaur, it's a lot of work to uncover. What else don't we know about dinosaurs? Well, we don't really know what color they were, right? Uh, they are starting to find some pigmentation, which might give suggest some colors, but in the main, we don't know what color they were. Now, this is an artistic rendition of a Triceratops, but this is what it actually was from. This is what we have. We don't have the bones. We don't have all the skin and the, and the tissues inside. Right? So we left us the bones. Here we see uh, some kind of a theropoda dinosaur with these long teeth. One of the things they're finding in the these fossils is they're finding cancers. They're finding tumors, such as tumors on the spine, growth on the spine, and uh, they have fossilized. We also find holes in the dinosaur bones where other dinosaurs have bit them. Actually, can you imagine a creature like this biting is going to put a hole right through bones, and that's what we find, find dinosaur bones uh, with holes in them and missing teeth, etc., indicating they were in some kind of battles, and uh, it wasn't easy to be a dinosaur back then. Okay. You also find what they call dinosaur boneyards, in which thousands and thousands of dinosaur bones are all what they call disarticulated. They're all disconnected from one another, and it's just a pile of bones. But wait a minute, how did they get to like that? Something must have done something to to bring them all together and then grind them all up, and then they all fossilize together. If you were to go to Utah, they have the Dinosaur National Monument. My wife and I actually went there. And they have a complete wall. It's about 300 feet long in a, in a building. And you can go in there and you see all these dinosaurs, about 1,500, 1,500 dinosaur bones of many different dinosaur varieties, such as Allosaurus, Apatosaurus, Camarasaurus, Diplodocus, Stegosaurus, all in bones, various pieces 
up in this rock. When they first uncovered this, they were thinking, well, let's gonna excavate all these bones. They realized, wait a minute, that's gonna be way too much work. Let's just leave it like that so people can see all of these bones all together. Now, how do you get all these dinosaur bones together? Well, they admit that it was caught in a flood. A flood captured all of these dinosaurs together, mixed them all up, and they all died there and fossilized. And how long does it take to turn something into a fossil? Almost, could be as almost instantly. It all depends on the conditions. Okay. Here was uh, National Geographic uh, had a picture of this um, a model of a 3D model of a uh, ankylosaur, or a dinosaur, an armored dinosaur, and I put together this little uh, video compilation, and so you have a, a, a real size of of this dinosaur. You'll see that in highlighted there is the part that they found, the rest they did not. And so you can see what it actually looks like. So they actually had a 3D model and I just captured them. Here's the head. You see the armor plating on the skin all over. And so it was very well protected and uh, various parts of the body. In fact, you can even see what it ate. The stomach contents were fossilized. Okay. And so they could tell what this thing ate. And of course, well, it's dead, but it's... Uh, that was pretty cool, right? Take a 3D um, rendering. Now, we know that dinosaurs got to be very, very big, but how big were they when they were born? How were they born? Were they live birth or made out of eggs? Came out of eggs? What do you think? Did dinosaurs come out of eggs or were they live born like an elephant? Any guesses? Oh, you already know the answer. Eggs, that's right. Well, how big were the eggs? If the dinosaurs got to be, the eggs must have been massive too, right? Well, actually, no. Dinosaur egg, that's about the largest they have found, or that one's on the left there. <coughs> and so the dinosaurs started out very, very tiny. It's only about this big. I mean, it's a big egg, especially if you're going to eat it, right? But it's a big egg. But it grew to be a massive creature, right? I always see growth was must have been very very interesting and that was actually featured in creation magazine a number of years ago so anyway. so they do know that dinosaurs actually laid eggs and had nest because they found a fossilized nest of eggs here's the mother bones mother bones and the eggs underneath and they were able to open up one of the eggs or at least cut it open and see the baby growing inside the egg Okay, one of the first fossilized embryos. And you see, it, it's all packed in there. Actually, when you see chickens, you know, when they're packed in the, how, 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 do, they, how do they squeeze them in there? All right, so that's it, dinosaur eggs. Now, what happened then? So they hatched out these little creatures, little dinosaur. Beep, 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 beep. Right. Now you see that big dinosaur. He's looking down at that little fella and what he's thinking. What do you think he's thinking? Anybody? Well, I think he's thinking snack. <laughs> dinosaurs ate dinosaurs, right? So anyway, but it gives an idea of the starting out very small and got to be very, very big. Okay. And here you see some of the biggest ones, the sauropod, the long-necked dinosaur. Here you give some example of the leg bone, the femur. Right? Can you imagine a creature a hundred tons, right? Dinosaur he used to be massive. Can you imagine? Thunder lizard. If you ever watched a Jurassic Park movie, I kind of give you an idea of them. They don't actually believe that. Uh, actually, talking to a paleontologist at the Royal Tyrone Museum, they don't believe that those long neck dinosaurs actually brought their necks up. They kept them more horizontal to counterbalance with their tail. Anyway, it's hard to know because there aren't too many living. Well, actually, there aren't any living today from which we could tell. So what about the, uh, how big, this is an Airbus A380, the largest passenger plane going, and you can see how long, some of them got as long as uh, uh, the entire length of that airplane. Okay, this got to be massive, Pla uh, the dinosaurs. Starting out from a small egg, hmm. Now, one of the things they thought, they did, discovered by looking at the dinosaur bones is they believe that it's kind of like tree rings. You know how the rings of the trees, that gives them an idea of how fast the trees grow? Well, by looking at that, they scientists have said, we think that dinosaurs actually remain pretty small for the first, let's say, five years of life, and then they underwent a growth spurt. Kind of like my grandson, he's now turning 13, is my height here. He says, Grandpa, I'm going to be taller than you. I said, no, no, you're stalled. You're never going to be any taller. And every time I see him, he wants 
to be taller, but anyway, we're fighting it out. I think he's going to win, though. <laughs> I ain't getting any taller. So they, have, they believe that dinosaurs would have undergone a growth spurt when they reached their teenage years. Okay. And in fact, some of those dinosaurs would have had to gain the mass of an African elephant every year which is about 5,406, which is about 12,000 pounds or six tons a year. So you can imagine how much food this thing would have had to eat in order to accumulate that weight. So it would have just been eating all the time in order to get that, that much mass. Well, here's a question. Many of the dinosaur fossils, such as the one you found in the dinosaur boneyards, are in sand, in sandy areas. Well, as you know, in sandy areas, you're not going to have a lot of vegetation growing. There's a desert-like environment. How do you come you have dinosaurs, dinosaur boneyards, in desert environments? They would not have lived there. They would have been transported there. So either they were running and were overcome. Well, maybe they were running and overcome with something overcame them. Maybe water. And I mentioned before, we talked about earlier about dinosaurs evolving into birds. This is what I believe. There's a, a little dinosaur there, wants to catch that dragonfly, and over a few hours, it's going to, well, actually, suppose it, over through evolutionary processes, those front little legs started becoming, having feathers on it, which, what good that would do, rather than fanning the, fanning the dragonfly, but eventually that would have to turn into wings, so it becomes a blue jay, okay? This is all imagined. Nobody ever saw that happen. But it's imagination. But they said, if this happened, there must be some fossil evidence. Aha! Let's look for some fossil evidence. So they dug through the phone, and they came up with this creature called Archaeopteryx. Back in uh, 1861, they found us a creature. They said, ah, voila! Nous avons an, uh, you know, an Archaeopteryx here. Okay. And it looks kind of like a dinosaur. Well, look at the legs, and on the there's claws on it, and it's got feathers. So it's halfway between a dinosaur and a bird. Aha! This is it. We found one. But one isn't really going to be a lot. And how do you prove it's actually intermediate? You can't prove anything, right? But it just fits the story. Except that scientists have been arguing about this from the, since they found it. In fact, the Dr. Fiducia said this. Now, he's an ornith, ornithopaleontologist. Uh, word. Paleontologists have tried to turn Archaeopteryx into an earthbound feathered dinosaur. But it's not. It is a bird. A perching bird. And no amount of paleobabble is going to change that. Now, he's an expert in the field. And he says it's not a transition between a dinosaur and a bird. It's just a perching bird. There are perching birds existing today which have little hooks on their, well, one of the joints in the wing for allow them to hang on in, onto trees and stuff like that. So perching birds exist today. This was just a dead one. Okay. Ah, so Archaeopteryx. they got to find something else. So in 1993, they came out with another one. And Time Magazine. Now, Time Magazine was the premier journal of the time. Right? The time. Time was the time. Okay. Anyway, that was a very important magazine. So if Time Magazine said it, well, it must have been true because that was the top of the line. This was before Internet and all that stuff. Okay, so 1993, they said, the truth about dinosaurs. Surprise! Just about everything you believe is wrong. And I took offense to that because the only reason I believed it is because you were saying that. And now that you're saying something different, you're saying, surprise, you were just telling me a lie before then, weren't you? Basically saying that whatever we told you before, that's no longer true. But now we're giving you the new truth, which will last until when? When is the new, new truth going to come? Okay. Anyway, that's the problem with changing all the time. So this says, meet Mononychus, a new link between dinosaurs and birds. Aha! Here now we finally have this link between dinosaurs and birds. Notice the very long tail that it has and all the feathers. Aha! Okay, this works very well. Jump forward to 2014. Wikipedia, what does it say? It says it was a small dinosaur. That's it. And what did they actually find? A holotype, which is the original first type, a specimen consisting of a partial skeleton lacking a tail and only small fragments of skull bones, including a complete brain case. So they found a bit of head, no tail. 
And yet, what does Time Magazine show? A big feathered tail, which I suggest to you people is simply a tail. Right? Tail? Okay. <laughs> wow, tough crowd must be getting, oh, time to go. <laughs> time to, all right. So now if birds, if the dinosaurs came first, and then the dinosaurs descended from them, you would expect in the fossil record, as you work from the bottom up, I should see the dinosaurs below and then birds up above, if they live later. But that's not what we find. We actually find, in the scientific record, we find birds with dinosaurs. In fact, the entire Mesozoic era, that area there which is for the dinosaurs between roughly 252 million years ago and 65 million years ago, not that we accept the date, but this is the time of the dinosaurs, they find over 120 bird species mixed in with the dinosaurs. So how can birds come after if they were living at the same time? Kind of a bit of a problem, right? And uh, then after the dinosaurs, after the birds, up at the top there, you should have the mammals. So after the dinosaurs died out, you should have mammals. Well, what they've actually found very recently is a mammal eating a dinosaur. It's hard to, well, this is what it was, more, locked in mortal combat. A mammal is eating a dinosaur while they're fighting each other, which means that they're coexisting at the same time. We have the fossils here to prove it. So one can, the mammals could not then be coming after the dinosaurs. Okay, so Dr. Carl Werner, a medical doctor, actually a creationist, he has this excellent website, thegrandexperiment.com. I highly recommend you go there. It's got this book on there online, thegrandexperiment.com. You may make a note of it because I'm not going to show it again. Okay, thegrandexperiment.com. So he and his wife went to over 65 natural history museums, talked to the curators of the museum and asked them all kinds of questions. So they were interested in dinosaur fossils. So at the Chicago Museum of Natural History, they saw this chart, this actual plaque that you see here. And all those, so they have all these, this is dinosaur, birds. So they believe that they all have common ancestor. In other words, they all came from a certain source. And they looked and said, well, we have lots of fossils of all of these creatures. Can hardly read them here. This is a bird, a tyrannosaurus, all these numbers of fossils found of all the different creatures. Now, all these black lines lines here are showing our connecting lines. In other words, you supposedly had an way back before, you had a common ancestor, which then split off and then split off and split off into all the different varieties of these creatures here. So if that was the case, I should find all kinds of fossils showing that they're transitional formed or in between forms or split off forms. So Dr. Werner actually looked and found that there was a total of zero transitional fossils. Wait a minute. So that means all of these lines here connecting are simply imagination. There's no physical evidence to support that. But in the evolutionist mind, that's how it had to have worked. So, and he said, Dr. I remember listening to the talk, he says, we've accumulated over a billion fossils. Don't bring fossils to a museum unless it's, I mean, I got a fossil here of a, of a mollusk, of a clam. You find them by the billion. Fossilized fish, by the billions. They're all over the place, okay? So, don't bring them. They got more than they need. Now, if it's a Tyrannosaurus rex, okay, that might be something else, but, right? But if you have a fossilized dog, not interested. Fossilized horse, not really interested, okay? And we, what we find is, the evidence that there's transition or evolution from one another just doesn't exist. Other than in the imagination. Hmm. Interesting. Well, what about the Bible? The Bible is a history book of the world. God has told us, it's his book to us, telling about what happened in the past. He had people write down the details, and that's what happened. And of course, we have God created in day six, like we talked in the previous uh, lesson. And um, so when would the marine reptiles and the flying reptiles been created? Well, since they are reptiles, and they were created on day five, things that lived in the flew in the sky and, and in the ocean, they would have been created on day five, along with all the other animals. 
Some people say, well, dinosaurs aren't mentioned in the Bible, so implying somehow that they didn't exist. How many times is the word elephant? Is the elephant in the Bible? It's not. Does that mean the dinosaurs, ne the elephants never existed? Of course not, right? Nobody named it. Is there a dog in the dinosaurs? Well, actually, there's dogs, okay, that's not one. What about cats? Right? Cats don't exist. Okay. Not really. And what about, uh, so if, if the dinosaurs are mammals, then they would have been created on day six. All right. What's so special about dinosaurs that everybody gets hung up on them? I'll tell you why, because they've got to be huge and monstrous size, but also because there's an age associated with them. The millions and millions of years, people are fascinated with things that are millions and millions of years old. Okay, so, so when God made everything, he would have created everything perfect. And what did everything, if it was perfect, eat? Well, the Bible tells us that everything ate plants. Everything was vegetarian. Oh, I'm not sure paradise would have been that great. <laughs> no burgers, no steaks, no bear ribs. Nah. Anyhow, would it really have been paradise? Anyway, but who would have known? <laughs> All right. Uh, and the book of the Bible says, did, so what did dinosaurs eat? Well, if the... Bible's true. It says that all the creatures and to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has life, the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And that was so. All right, so everything great, a plant. But you're looking at that dinosaur head and you think, it's got these awful big teeth. Going to eat lettuce? I mean, like, I don't know, arugula? I'm not sure, right? But does big, big teeth actually imply meat eating? Well, you think, well, what about this creature? It's got big teeth. Does it eat meat? Anybody know what this is? Beaver. It's a what? Is it a beaver? What, I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear you. Bear, Bear that is correct. Very good. Well, you're one of the few people ever got it right the first time. Excellent. Right. Bear skull, right? I think this sheep, this, this bear is a little sheepish. It's supposed to be a terrifying animal. I'm not going to eat berries. Mm, he caught me. Okay. So, obviously, bears can eat uh, berries. That's what they call them, bears. Berries. <laughs> anyway. Sorry, he's getting tired. Right. What about this creature? What do you think this, what do you think this is? Anybody? A dog? Mm, no. Cat. A what? Cat. Cat? Like a meow cat? Yeah. No. No. <laughs> no. I thought somebody was going to say a saber-toothed tiger. Yeah, no, it's not. A what? No, sorry, it's a fruit bat. <laughs> Guess what fruit bats eat? I'm not, I, I don't answer all at once. <laughs> fruit bat, okay. What about this creature? Look at all those sharp teeth on it. Oh, that's kind of... Any ideas? Vampire bat? I think you just like saying vampire, right? And bat, right? So, no, it's not a vampire bat, but it's yeah, close. But anyway. any ideas? No, it's a chihuahua. <laughs> yeah, real terrifying uh, carnivore that one. <laughs> what about this thing? A what? Hippopotamus? Uh, no, 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 it's kind of... Any ideas? What do you say? Dolphin? Dolphin? Uh, no, no, I'm not, that's good, it's good, it's a guess. <laughs> it is a bulldog. <laughs> yeah, not really a huge carnivore. Now, this one. Look at that. Look at the teeth on that thing, eh? What do you think? Saber tooth tiger? Saber -tooth tiger? No. Oh, you got it. You, that's, you, you must have. That's right. It's a Chinese water deer. Now, I don't know. You have a lot of deer around here. Do you ever seen any deer eating meat? No. Well, I mean, there might be some squirrely ones, but anyway, right? 
typically not, okay? It's, it's a, so it's obviously deer eating plants. So just because they have long fangs and stuff doesn't necessarily mean they eat meat. In fact, there was a lion. Also in Creation Magazine, if you had gotten it, you would have gotten this article, right? The lion that wouldn't eat meat. This was actually a, a, a lioness that, as you can see, it uh, lion and the lamb were lying down together. Well, actually standing, but you see the lion also with some uh, chicks. You see the lion going for a ride in a, <laughs> in a convertible. And here, the, the butcher is offering this lion meat. Refuse to eat meat. And in the article, it says that the, uh, an expert in lions said this was probably one of the healthiest specimens of lions they'd ever seen. Do we even have in Creation Magazine a shark that would eat lettuce? Can you imagine? <laughs> lettuce alone. <laughs> anyway. What about not eating meat? Look, it doesn't have sharp teeth, can't eat meat, right? Okay, that's right. So, Anyway, the teeth shape have really nothing to do with whether you eat or not. What happened to dinosaurs? Well, if they were all eating plants, something went wrong because they were not continuing to eat plants. So as you know, the Bible tells us that God, Adam and Eve had brought sin and death into the world and that brought all kinds of suffering. And so they were kicked out of the garden. And so animals like the dinosaurs, which were living in harmony together at one time, then that, that changed and they started eating one another. And uh, in fact, they actually have a fossils of a raptor and a crested dinosaur locked in mortal combat. They were fighting. Uh, obviously, this is the, there's the crest here. There's a hook from one of the raptor legs. Another one here, another one here. And uh, they were in the process of fighting when they were all of a sudden entombed. They were caught in water and all of a sudden in, in a flood and they turned into fossils almost immediately. They didn't even have time to disengage, right? They were just simply buried and flash fossilized. Incredible, huh? Listen a minute. What about what happened to the dinosaurs? Well, they said that the uh, dinosaur, there was a huge asteroid that hit in Chicxulub in uh, Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico that put all this dust into the atmosphere. Actually, I was reading something, a uh, scientist had this report about this, may have. You always find that these reports are always may have, could have, suggest, because they can't really prove it, it's just thought, beliefs, okay? So, but that's only one of many creator of asteroid impacts. Here you see around the world all these different asteroid impacts, even in northern Quebec, or in Quebec, north of Bay Como, this is the Manicouagan uh, impact crater, and the Manicouagan River down the Manic, uh, the hydro dams are down below that. Well, why didn't this one then, allegedly? What, what, what impact would this have had, okay? It's not, it's not just one crater, okay, it's an asteroid impact. There were many. We don't believe this is what happened, okay? One of the reasons is that uh, allegedly that this wiped out the dinosaurs, but somehow allowed all the other reptiles to continue to live, right? Why didn't it kill, why only selected creatures, why didn't it take out all of them if it has, if it was wiping out creatures, okay? It's only, I mean, the, the, the uh, asteroid impact is only one of many theories, right? And one of the, we believe in, if this was the Bible, is a global flood. As we already talked about, uh, the rock strata is around the world. Fossils of dinosaurs are in the rock strata. These rock strata are laid down by the flood, and we have dinosaur DNA and all this stuff. Okay. Now, some people suggest the real reason why dinosaurs went extinct. Right? I mean, kids. Oh, oh! It's funnier on my screen here, but obviously it's not working. <laughs> well, what happened there? Okay, locked up. Oh, sorry about that. I'm gonna have to. It was funny. It was really funny. <laughs> Okay, let's try this again. Ah, damash. Okay, so this one here. Oh, okay, Manicouagan, we saw that one. Asteroid impact, we saw this one. Uh-huh, okay, and next one. Next one. There, okay, that's the real reason why dinosaurs. It was funny, right? I mean, <laughs> I was showing this and nobody moves. Nobody's, wow, oh, tough crowd, right? All right, kids, let this be a lesson. <laughs> All right, what about Noah's Ark? Oftentimes you'll see bathtub arcs. 
In fact, both Creation Ministry International and Answers in Genesis will not allow to sell books depicting Ark this way. And yet there's thousands of them. Okay. So, I mean, this is obviously ridiculous. And the, it, it makes the whole Ark seem ridiculous. I mean, really? How are you going to get... That doesn't make any sense. Uh, a Dutchman actually at one time uh, in Holland actually created a full-size ark, put it on, on uh, barges, and Answers in Genesis, you mentioned that, actually created, built a uh, $100 million theme park on which they have a full-size ark. Again, it doesn't float, but it's uh, very impressive. That ramp you see on the outside is where the animals would have gone up two by two and into the door on the side. They put all kinds of cages in there to show how much uh, animals being put into cages, food storage, etc., etc. And um, so they're trying to give people some idea of, of how big this ark is and to answer some of the questions about, well, how could you get all those animals in the ark? Obviously, if it was a bathtub ark with the giraffe sticking out the top, it's obviously not going to put a lot of animals in there, right? But the, uh, the, the ark was massive. It was a very highly stable and uh, uh, large uh, boat. Here you can see a super tanker, similar dimensions. The dimensions that God told uh, Noah to make the ark was similar to what that super tanker is. Now, in fact, they come in the same color. It's amazing, right? The only thing is the ark doesn't have a pointy end. Right? Why didn't the ark have a pointy end? Because it wasn't going anywhere. It was just floating. I just... It, there's only water everywhere. There's nowhere to stop. It's just going to float along. Okay. Now, how about all those creatures, particularly the, the dinosaurs? How could you get the dinosaurs on the ark? Well, wasn't there thousands and thousands and millions of dinosaurs? How are you going to fit them in the ark? Well, some of the things you need to understand about dinosaurs. So Dr. Jack Horner, who's an evolutionist, says that he believes that there's evidence for shape-shifting dinosaurs. Shape-shifting. Right. Well, he believes that as the dinosaurs got older, they actually changed their shape over time. For example, on the left side, you would have a young dinosaur, and as it got older, it started changing shape. started losing some of its hair, started turning gray, etc. Right. So it's all the same kind of dinosaur. It just happens to get be old, different ages. So, for example, these are all the same dinosaurs dinosaurs, same kind, but obviously they look different. So when a paleontologist uncovers this, he thinks, oh, I got a new dinosaur. I'm going to name it after myself. Okay. And a new dinosaur. But actually, Dr. Corner saying, really, they're all kind of the same. They're all of the same dinosaur kind. And so when you look at all these crested dinosaurs, Ceratopsia, all the different uh, frills and horns, quite possibly, they're all the same kind. So when God is bringing two of each kind of dinosaurs on the ark, how many kinds needed to go on? Well, scientists believe it's only about 60 to 70 different dinosaur kinds. So you only needed to get about 140 or 120 to 140 dinosaurs in total into the ark. Well, that's not a problem except for the, except for the size, right? That's a little bit of a problem. Like, okay, have a tight squeeze, tight squeeze. Right? Okay, well, that's not going to work, will it? I don't think it's going to work. Okay, well, here we got these, oh, I've got to squeeze one of these in. Ah, oh, Lord, what have you done? Right? Why did you bring these old monsters? Why didn't you bring, oh, wait a minute, maybe God thought, ah, ah, I'm going to give you the little ones, right? And with the power of PowerPoint, look at that. We shrunk the dinosaur. So it's, as again, they start out eggs this big. They don't get very big until they're five years old. So God says, okay, I'm going to send some male and female baby dinosaurs or young dinosaurs. They're going to get older anyway, right? And they're going to be well cared for on the ark. And so I've had that in a Tyrannosaurus rex. Isn't that amazing, right? God just shrinks them. Or actually, he brought the younger ones in. Two by two, not a problem. Okay, after the flood, or actually, in, in the flood is going to happen. 
So what's happening is that now the oceans of the, uh, the, the fountains of the great deep birth forth and you're having all these tsunamis happening. The water from the ocean is going more higher and higher onto the land. So the creatures that are obviously in the, uh, on the bottom of the ocean are going to be buried first. So you would have the vast majority of fossils are marine fossils. 95% of all fossils are the creatures that lived in the ocean. That makes sense because they were there first. Okay? And then as creatures, as you get moved, the water moves higher and higher onto the land, you know, the water level is going up, the creatures that are on land are going to start moving away from the water. And if you have herds of dinosaurs, guess what they're going to do? Water's there, they're going to go there. Okay. And that's what we find. We actually find dinosaur tracks in the United States all heading in the same direction. Now, it's been raining, so everything is very muddy. And the dinosaurs are running. In fact, some of them are laying, the females are laying eggs, two by twos. And as they go along. But one of the other things we don't find is a lot of baby dinosaurs, or young dinosaurs. Di these dinosaurs, big animals, especially the thoropods, are, they're hungry, but they're moving, spending a lot of energy. So what are they going to eat along the run? The small ones. Small ones are going to be vulnerable, separated from the parents, and the, that's why we're, when we find fossils, we don't find a lot of juvenile dinosaurs, we find the adults, which would make sense because they would have trampled, they would have drowned, they would have been uh, eaten. Okay. Now, the, one of the questions is, okay, dinosaurs and humans. Is there any evidence that dinosaurs and humans lived at the same time? Now, if you're an evolutionist, you would scoff at the idea. Dinosaurs died out long before humans came on the scene. But you're a creationist. You think that, well, God created dinosaurs and man. Why don't we see them together? Well, one reason we won't see them together because they wouldn't have lived together. Like, people don't usually live where, dinos where lions are. How can we go find uh, dinosaurs or lions? Well, usually if you find a lion, it's because they've eaten humans. Okay. But in this particular case, so, so here in Paluxy Valley in, in, in Texas, they find all of these dinosaur footprints. And one of the things they find is human footprints overlapping these dinosaur tracks. Okay. Now, it's very hard to prove that these are human. Again, if, you're, if people are evolutionists, no matter what it is, it can't be human. Even if you wrote, this is, Gus was here on it, it's not going to prove. But, so, there's an imprint on there. Now, if this imprint, this is a cast, if, if an imprint had been, uh, if somebody had carved it in there, took a casting and carves it in by whatever, it would not have compressed the sand underneath it. But what they did was they analyzed the, the compression. So under the balls of your feet and the heel of your feet, it's obviously going to be more pressure. So the sand under that would be more compressed other than on the arch of your foot. And that's what they did. They actually used experimental technique to measure the compression of the sand. And they found under the heel and under the ball of the feet, you have, it's much more dense sand, indicating there was pressure of a foot on there. Okay. Suggestion. This is Paluxy Valley. And, okay, and, um, here's another thing we find with dinosaurs. This neck. Notice the neck has been craned back like this. Very common in, long, in dinosaurs with long necks. Think about it. The dinosaur is walking along, has a heart attack, dies over. It's not going to crane its neck like this, right? It's just going to lie down and lie down flat. So what does this mean, though? Well, this is an autonomous reaction. When the brain is starved of oxygen, the neck starts to contour like this. And this is indicative of these creatures being buried alive. So they were, they were living, and then something buried them. They ran out of oxygen, and then their necks craned back like this in a death pose. Then rigor mortis set in, and then they, you know, they were unable to move. They were fossilized in this position. This is very typical, and in indicating of a, a burial, buried alive. And rapid burial. Every fossilized, fossilization is, by definition, rapid. Now, Darwin thought it would take thousands of years, but in this case, particularly, here we have a marine reptile in the process of giving birth. Okay, so we talk about long labor, so obviously it's not going to take thousands of years. Okay, so obviously the mother was giving birth and it was buried and the, both the mother and the baby were fossilized together. They didn't even have time to exit the mother. Okay, Oop. 
that's what happened. And the fish on the bottom so quickly fossilized that the fish didn't have time to decay. Now, kids, you can try this at home. Get a live fish, put it on the counter, and see what happens over, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight days. See what happens. Well, you know what's going to happen. It's all going to decay and start to rot and fall apart, and it'll stink, and you'll be asked to get rid of it pretty quick, right? But this one, you can see all the spine, the fins, and the, uh, the ribs, and even the fish that is in the process of eating. This was flash fossilized, and you find these by the billions. If somebody wants to sell you, well, oh, well, here's a fish fossil. <gasps> wow, this is extremely rare. <laughs> They'll say it's rare, but it's actually there are gazillions of them. We already saw this dinosaur uh, organic material. We won't go over that again in the kidney young. Okay, a few other things. Oof. Okay. Why don't we see dinosaurs in the Bible? Okay, well, that's a good question. Anybody know the answer? We do. Pardon? We do. The word didn't get invented. So that's correct. The word dinosaur was not invented until 1841, about 160, 70, 80 years ago. So you can't use a word that wasn't invented yet. All right, so Sir Richard Owens of the British Museum called these fossil remains, he says, fearfully great reptiles. He called them dinosaurs. Okay, and it stuck and everybody liked it. Okay, but what did they, when they found the fossils before, what did they call these things? Anybody? Dragon. Correct. That is correct. They called them dragons. Okay, we'll cover that in a second. All right, what about in the Bible? Okay, do we see dinosaurs in the Bible? Is the word dinosaur in the Bible? No. Are creatures that we suggest could have been dinosaurs in the Bible? Possibly. I always caution people, say, this proves it. It just suggests it. It does not prove it. Okay, for example, in the book of Job, it talks about a creature, behemoth. And behemoth has a whole bunch of attributes, including its tail that sways like a cedar. Now, you might think of a cedar hedge. You know, a cedar hedge, you know, long, a head like that, something go big, right? But in Lebanon, that's a cedar of Lebanon. That's a big tree. But if you look in your Bible, the commentator, the notes at the bottom talk about behemoth. Well, it could have been an elephant or a hippopotamus. But when you look at the tail of a hippopotamus or an elephant, I mean, if I was a hippopotamus, I'd be embarrassed about my tail, right? <laughs> it's really, that's sorry, that's not a tail, that's just a spreader for stuff, right? So, <laughs> that's actually what it is, <laughs> right? It's not really, did uh, somebody cut it off? It's like weird, okay? So, that certainly doesn't talk about it like a, a cedar, right? So I have this long tail. Can I put it on an elephant? What do you think? Does that make sense? No, that's silly. What about this one? A hippopotamus? Does that make sense? No, that'd be silly. What about a sauropod dinosaur? Does that make sense? Ah, oh, this, this girl's got that. She's got it. Oh, man, this is good. I mean, she's got it, right? That makes sense. Okay, so that's suggestive that it was a dinosaur that Job saw if you even countenance the idea that humans and dinosaurs coexisted. If you already concluded it didn't, then this is not going to convince you. Okay. All right, what about other things that suggest that after the flood, the dinosaurs were still existing? Well, here's an example of in 2000 BC, in China, there was this ceratopsian, a crested dinosaur. Okay, so what was it, a centrosaurus? Okay, in the book Dragon, this is an excellent book done by a guy in BC, Vance Nelson. He took all the, he took photos himself and put it in an excellent coffee table book. I highly recommend it, right? So. Why would the Chinese carve a creature like this unless they had seen something like this? And if it was a one-off, but here we have a cylinder seal. It's, it's a roller, and you roll it over clay, and it makes an impression in the clay. And here you can see some creatures like a tyranno this thing, okay? And uh, so this is very long neck, so it's... Uh, how, why would they have drawn a creature like this unless somehow they had seen something like this? And in Cambodia, in Angkor Wat, in um, the world's largest religious monument, uh, now the gardener gave up a few years ago. I think he uh, figured it was a lost cause. But in some of the columns, they have carvings in the columns. And one of the carving the columns, if you look closely, is this. What does it look like? Stegosaurus. Hmm. 
A co-worker of mine, who's an atheist, actually went to Anger Wat. He took a photo. He brought it back to work. And we were sitting at work, and he showed it on my computer. I said, I said yeah, it looks just take a No, 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 that's just a stylized whatever creature he wanted to be. So another guy, a guy named Guy, came by. I said, Guy, what does this look like? He said, Stegosaurus. So it indicates what do you, you see what you want to see. My atheist friend Mark didn't want to see, uh, could not accept that this was a dinosaur because that would have mean, meant, uh, he knew exactly what it meant. It would have meant that in 12, in the 12, 800 years ago, people had seen a creature look like a stegosaur. Nope. Doesn't matter what I see or what evidence present, I refuse to believe. And unfortunately, that's one of the problems. It's not that there isn't evidence. It's that no matter what the evidence is, I'm not going to believe it. Okay. Also, in England, in, they used to bury the dead in the floors of the cathedrals. And they would outline this particular one. This is for Bishop Bell in Carlisle Cathedral. And on that brass around the, the tomb are these creatures. Okay. This is in England, by the way. So we had China and Mesopotamia and Asia, and now we have some looks like dinosaurs in, uh, now they're all being worn off because people walk on this. Okay, now they have a carpet on there so you don't. And in Mali, in Africa, they have sculptures which, I took a picture, this suggests above a dinosaur, of some kind of dinosaur. And what about Sir George, or St. George slaying a dragon? What was he actually slaying? What was this, where was this from? There must have been something legend or something in history. Well, he's slaying it. And even have the, the, the flag of Wales has this dragon. Okay. And finally, Marco Polo. Okay. So Marco Polo was an Italian explorer who went to China to get pizza and uh, spaghetti. And thank you, Marco, for that. That's where they came from, from China, actually. So he took a number of overland journeys. And one of the journeys, uh, he did several, and he journaled. He journaled, this I think is about the 12th century, right? All the way over to China. He then, on his second journey, he wrote this. I'm going to just highlight the yellow parts. He says, here are seen huge serpents. Jaws are wide enough to swallow a man. The teeth are large and sharp, and their whole appearance is so formidable that neither man nor any kind of animal can approach them without terror. Whatever beast they meet with and can lay hold of, whether tiger, wolf, or any other, they devour. Hmm. What did he see? Certainly it wasn't a tiger. Think about a creature that can actually eat tigers. That's one nasty creature. What was it? We don't know. He couldn't have called it a dinosaur because that word hadn't been invented yet. All right, in conclusion, God created the dinosaurs on day six. Dinosaurs, like people, would have lived long lives. Uh, people and dinosaurs probably did not live near each other, but may have crossed paths, such as in that Paluxy River. Dinosaurs were on the ark. Most died in the flood. That's why we have all their fossils. But some would have gone extinct. Uh, sorry, uh, many were fossilized. Of those that came out of the ark, some would have gone extinct, but not fossilized. In other words, when you had those long, those triceratops and others that came out of the ark, well, or the long neck ones, or the, the environment has changed significantly. So they would have had a hard time surviving, or some of them would have gone extinct, but because they weren't buried, you would, now have the, you would never have the bones of those. Okay. Organic material from dinosaurs proves dinosaurs lived thousands of years ago. I'm going to say this as a proof rather than a suggestion. Because unless somebody can explain or demonstrate how organic material can last millions of years, there's just no... This is proof. There are many artifacts and historical records of dragons that are dinosaurs indicating were seen by humans. Dinosaurs are no longer alive, but there might be a few left. Anyhow, some resources, dino exploring dinosaurs, uh, um, secrets of planet Earth, dragons, excellent for, remember, Christmas is coming, right? So this is an excellent resource. Other dinosaur books discovered. I'm not sure we have that one on the left. Uh, and there's other ones. Not all the dinosaurs, all the books we have here are, came today. We have hundreds and uh, you can order online. There's another book, just came out. This is a heavy book. It's a lot of heavy material, good stuff in there. And some others. That, ladies and gentlemen, is it.
I'm done.